Bonjour mes amis, hi guys. People always ask me where to go to find watches, Rolex in particular in Hong Kong. So we are in uh, Yomate. You take exit uh, A2 of the, the subway, the MTR, and you get to uh, Dundas Street. Over there you have the main road, Nathan Road. And this is Dundas Street. We're gonna go over there in a minute. First I'll show you one shop that uh, tends to get a few different uh, few different brands I've seen a couple of interesting uh, Calatravas here let's see what they, they have today get some uh, quirky tutors always find some Seamasters party as well in this shop got a Vacheron over there price is it's reasonable 220,000 it is over retail but not insane for the uh, silver dial compared to the to the blue dials I'm trying to find something while recording this that uh, catches my eye uh, let's see over there Oh, nice. There is a uh, Cartier Santos, 55,000. That for the two tone might be under the retail price, actually. I'm a bit interested in this Santos, and uh, I like the shade of this dial. And here you have the Rolex stuff. Yeah, nothing too interesting. So we're gonna go. Over there you have some uh, well main street type of, uh, of shops but usually the the prices will be better if you go to the the smaller streets rather than main street uh, shops cool uh, Lamborghini parked here quite uh, precariously someone who doesn't really mind a little scratch on his uh, Lambo so well, this era here, Yomate, it's a very young era, you know. It's a, it's a bit run down. It's not like all super flashy and clean like uh, in uh, Tokyo, but you can compare it to, uh, at, for the age uh, trench, you can compare it to, uh, to uh, Shibuya in, uh, in, in Tokyo. Let's try not to get run over. Here you have the ladies market, it's a very long street. So if you can try to find some uh, cheap clothes, cheap uh, toys made in China, you can go there. For example, the other day I was looking for my, my son wanted to have the, uh, the jersey of the Belgian team of soccer. If you go to uh, Adidas or a, a proper retailer, I mean the real stuff is going to cost you 100 bucks, 150 bucks. It's very expensive those jerseys. jerseys. But on the ladies market, it's gonna be like 10 bucks, you know, not even. And uh, yeah, it does the job, you know, especially for toys and, and stuff like that. It doesn't really matter. Anyway, uh, one more Lambo with a cool plate, 717. Not sure why, but... Uh, and we get to uh, Top Watch. That's a brand new shop. So here we are on Dundas Street. And I have all the Rolex stuff. You'll see a lot of uh, 88 because it's uh, 888 is very lucky, and it's the way they say also that the watches are very clean. But uh, 88, 80, 800 is the way to sell the watches because it's a lucky price, price that you won't negotiate uh, on. But uh, for this model, 70% new, that's about the price. If you want something uh, really mint, uh, same model here, 80% new, but cheaper. Maybe that's the one to get, but maybe it's not with the box and papers uh, you can probably some of you will be able to read the uh, here whatever it's it's got the, the papers the warranty papers uh, but also you can see the it's a dis different serial you got a V serial and a G serial so look at those all those details but at the end of the day you get the same watch for all intents and purposes uh, very high prices 400k for the uh, Royal Oaks, you know, the uh, 15500, 15400, they're, they're really big. 
is a 450 over there uh, probably wears better than the uh, the more expensive ones but I don't even even look at the APs to be honest the, the prices are just uh, shocking shocking as well the CHNR the, they've gone from 150 to 180 thousand Hong Kong dollars uh, I'm sure the watch box has them for 200 now it's just gone out of hand on, on that model and the Air King man prices also uh, quite above uh, the retail now you get the new OP41 66 so this one is kind of like the flagship is the one that was really uh, at the forefront of the the commercial for the the OP41 and uh, really doesn't f it's not priced too too crazy so if you really gotta have one uh, that's a good looking one uh, and the uh, black dye mill gas I quite like it I gotta say almost like it better than my uh, Z blue now stepping back a bit we have a queen watch it's a place I bought a couple of watches at um, including the Tudor uh, Tudor Tiger they usually have a few it looks like they've cleaned up the shop it was a lot messier before they've made a, a nice representation here look if you want a cool Rolex that nobody else has maybe the Cellini here it's the way to go always a lot of panerais in every shop I think you just get you just need one maybe uh, here we can compare another GMT black 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 2015 and you see it says 888 it means it's in a top condition and they're reaching yeah 100,000 now it's getting a bit pricey I think you might want to direct your attention to the the two-tone model because you, you really get the gold for not much more now uh, but these ones too are starting to get uh, to creep up in price like everything else but you can always go in and make a make an offer or maybe you can go for the five digit reference here I really like those they have a lot of charm and uh, the date wheel is usually quite uh, yellow I like that look uh, just, just uh, take a good look at the patina on the hands and the uh, indices make sure it matches uh, if it doesn't well no big deal but you can negotiate a lower price but when you will sell it uh, it will be a point of uh, contention of course here you have lots of uh, Tudors new old stocks those, those quirky ones there uh, these are quite popular here sort of the, the, the day just and the day date uh, versions from uh, Tudor yeah they don't have as much as before uh, here they do have a cool Cartier Pasha C timer so this one uh, is the diver version 20,000 it's just not much it, that's, that's where most of those steel Cartiers go for uh, or different models Quite, uh, quite cool, I like these. I like the Pasha very much. All right, nothing uh, interesting uh, there for once. Then we get to uh, this shop here. They have a few few straps, a few boon straps and whatnot. And uh, here the uh, usual overpriced uh, stuff. Well, there's not even a price on, uh, on, on these. So let's not uh, linger too long. They have all sorts of, uh, of watches. A couple of uh, unusual pieces. Patek Perpetual. Uh, what else? Some vintage stuff. But yeah, no price. So we're not going to waste too much time on this. Also the new models. I like this uh, Daytona the most, I think, uh, on the Osterflex. Very cool. Very cool look. Well, there you go, Chiro Tiger with the Panda. All right, moving on. <coughs> so we get to the end of the Dunda Street. So there's a few more shops, but the, the main gallery to go in 
is this one here, a covered gallery where you see over there uh, London Watch. We're gonna go there in a minute. There's always tons of shops and uh, millions of dollars worth of uh, vintage uh, Rolex. And uh, this shop here, always interesting. Uh, they have, yes, they have vintage Rolex and Tudor. And some very, very nice ones at that. Oh, even the doctor's watch there. The other day I saw a two-tone one, full set, in great condition. Got the bubble backs. And here they have that uh, knockoff brand WMT. I'm, uh, I might pick up, pick one up. Uh, so they do all those, all the vintage Rolex knockoffs. Uh, the, the honeycomb dials, the double red line, uh, and everything. Uh, e even the, the the stamps, like the Kandahar stamps, and uh, and all that. It, it's really quite well made. Maybe I'll pick up one of these. I mean, is the sort of stuff you wanna you wanna pick up, or the Arabic bezel? Very cool. Sort of a big light looking uh, bezel. Uh, you got the mill sub look. It's just, I mean, you, you, you get the look right, but obviously <laughs> it's not, uh, well, it's, it's, it's just a knockoff, but they do also the, yeah, this look that we've seen recently quite a bit, not just from Blancpain, but from a couple of other brands, even Bulova reissued one of these that was never sold actually and uh, yeah WMT does it so maybe if you just want the look something to consider I think they're made here right here in, uh, in Hong Kong uh, which one do you like most I think uh, I like the the mill subs so or the sub mill I don't know what they call it uh, and, and this here but you know, I would feel a bit uh, ridiculous wearing this in a city where you might walk by someone who actually has the real thing, including my friend uh, Johnny on guitar. Got some uh, vintage PD going on. Also the uh, Railmaster, Seamaster. Those are the vintage ones. It's not the, the reissues. And then you have uh, Gégeur, uh on bracelet, Memovox. That's maybe even more cool. What is more cool, guys? Right or left? Now, this is interesting. 45,000 for the original Longines, the one that just reissued. That could be something. At least you're getting something real, you know. It's not uh, no fakery there. Oh, this uh, Tissot looks quite good as well, by compacts, you know. How about that? See, I like this shop. They always have uh, cool things. Uh, or oh, oh, this one here. Hard to read the time or any information. It's a Tissot Chrono Janeiro Z199. And the price is in the only 14,000. That can't be. That is really cool. Maybe I'll go in to try that. See if it runs. Wow, what a cool looking watch. Look at the crown. Is that a pusher in the crown? We're gonna go in and check that out. Uh, this Seamaster 300, love it, love it, love it, love it. I'm gonna say hello to my friend Eric. He always wears is uh, what do we have here oh another interesting thing uh, this is Seiko uh, it's a Seiko Grand Seiko right you got the GS high beat great case price is 18,000 man this shop is always surprising you got uh, Zenit here this is the the shop's name PNF I think it's called present and future watches. Uh, they do their own watch as well. 
you see anybody can get this stuff built here in Hong Kong and they have also interesting uh, bracelets very good shop with uh, straps I should pick one up for my speed timer uh, actually doesn't this have more charm than all the reissues and then the, the knockoffs and all that you know why would you need to pay millions for the new Patek when you can have this and uh, start a conversation look at this cool dial the texture of it that's the stuff or, or kind of stuff that uh, if you're a watch guy you gotta love you have to love or Le Mania here any car but this Tissot there, wow. I'll go check it out in a bit. Yeah, let's keep going, still on Dunda Street. This shop here, Yulon Classic, is probably the most expensive prices on the street. I don't think they've, not many of these have actually sold to customers in Hong Kong. It's just uh, gone straight to these shops here. And uh, yeah. Look what they're asking here for black, 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 119, 120. I mean, uh, but, it's, but it's new. It's a new old stock. So, yeah, maybe if you're really... Well, I think it's the one thing I wouldn't buy. If you're going to wear it, don't buy a new old stock because then you're, you're kind of stuck. You can't really wear it. Uh, and I'm going to have a few Pateks in the back. 5146 in gray, white gold, yellow gold. Uh, you get here your sector dial 5396. There's a lot of stuff in this uh, window. 400k for this. It's uh, way above a retail, which is around what 250. I think the retail for for something like that. The GMT here at 117. Yeah. Oh, and they got the, the Mont Blanc there, uh, the rear sec. 55.8. Uh, that might be a bit. Uh, yeah. A bit optimistic. Oh, and look. A Smurf. And a Yachty. And then Hublot. A bunch of uh, cool offshores. You can just pause wherever you like. This video, IWC, never an easy one to, to sell. And some cart here, there. But this is where I like to look at the back of those shops because this is where you find a bit your, your gems if you want to have that cart here that's a bit unusual. Uh, you, you might get it at a decent price, but the Rolex stuff forget about it of course all right when you go on you can stop for a sushi maybe in this era you have uh, watches and then you have uh, model cars and uh, also toy uh, guns uh, this shop here you yeah, always see uh, cool vintage stuff some Tudors uh, 1675 but not crazy prices all in all for the 1675 I, I think and you know while the value of the current Pepsi might fluctuate I think the value of the uh, the vintage stuff is a bit more uh, a bit more stable a bit more set so these these versions of the, the Tudors this is the big block before the, the Tigers. This one has the, the straight uh, sides, making it very blocky. Yeah? Uh, this one here will have uh, the GMT bezel. So pretty cool. You got three complications in, uh, in one with the date and the chronograph. And the same in the Panda version. This is the uh, outgoing version of the, the Bluesy. Retail was 105, now they're asking more, 10,000 more. Yeah, I had it in my hands many times at uh, the shops when it was available. 
I'm not going to buy it now that it's, uh, it's more <laughs> expensive, you know, I should have just made my move before. Here I'm guessing we have a flat 4 given the price, yeah, 226,000, that's a lot, it's been good condition. And a V serial, one of the, l probably one of the last ones, 137, two tones, Sabi. Now if you want your money's worth of complications. You go with the GLC. So you can always have your dials replaced. find the links even the full bracelets which comes in handy if you're buying the watch without the bracelet or if the bracelet is very damaged you can find the vintage correct ones get all the references here One out, five or six, six, eight. Looks pretty small. And no, please do not contact me to come and buy your bracelet for you. I'm not getting into that uh, trap. <laughs> it's just uh, there's just too many fiddling about. Now uh, this is another way to enter the uh, the gallery. There's a few shops here. This is where I bought actually this watch. Uh, the one here friendly uh, watch very friendly uh, couple there and uh, I was ac actually interested in a, in a date just here they just two that was at a very good price uh, it's gone I just couldn't buy both but here there's a uh, the Pasha that I would want uh, just uh, rotating bezel but most importantly with the cage uh, above it Very cool, just 26,000, it's just not an expensive watch at all, but uh, it's got the look. Small Seamaster there. Cool uh, Tudor D8, I think it's the best looking one. If you like two tone. Yeah. Oh, a nice Seamaster here. blue dial quite cool this one what's the price is it 9500 can you go wrong with that you get the waves you get the broad hands the nice indices loom for days I like that and then here you have the Rolex, uh, the Maserati dial. Usually price is a bit better here. And probably you can negotiate. Uh, they're, they're willing to make a sale here. Uh, you can negotiate a bit better. Cool linen dial there. Very nice. Nobody can tell you you're wrong when you wear a watch like that. Oh, there you go. Another one, but this one with a smooth bezel. The fluted is the way to go, I think. There you go. Some new old stocks. Including uh, this bluesy. No price on it. We all love the bluesy. Yeah, and some uh, chronographs. Nice to see them together. Also a nice, uh, nice day date.
there you go. All right, let's get going to the main the main gallery. Few more dodgy watches here. rubber bees and there you go so when people ask me where to go first I would uh, recommend them to go to in central to the vintage concept in a uh, TST to uh, uh, a classic watch repair and then to London watch good place to start it's a really beautiful uh, beautiful shop uh, very professional and they have uh, just a wonderful wonderful stuff prices are they're okay. They're not in insane. They're just uh, in line with the with the market. Uh, and but the stuff they get is really good quality. And there's the straight shooters, very good reputation. So this is probably the the shop I would start at. Look at this meteorite dial. Wow. Beautiful uh, mill gas. It's been there for a long, long time. Two hundred forty-eight thousand. Yeah, before you shell out that kind of price, uh, you consider what can you get in the, the modern stuff for this one too, I really like it, 1675. I think I tried it before. I uh, think it was a bit over polished on one side. It's often the, the thing to look for, how much polishing was done. This is quite high for a... Oh no, it's a 16760, so it's the, the Fat Lady Coke. Very, very nice. But those are almost a dime a dozen, you know. Well, until they are not, but for now, they are. And you see, they're all in the same price range, and it gets difficult to, to just choose one, you know. Uh, of course, if you can afford anything, you can uh, buy them all. You can buy the, the very best, uh, like this. But otherwise, I think people... Uh, these watches have been here for a long, long time. People think twice, I think. Uh, because, uh, yeah, there's tons more tons more inside because they are yeah next to it you'll have the uh, the brand new stuff and I think what stops a lot of people is that yeah if you're gonna spend a hundred thousand hundred twenty thousand then you might as well uh, pay the premium to get the brand new stuff the one that you really wanted uh, you know this uh, the Pepsi this is uh, the first version of it with a very pink uh, hue to the, the red and the, the purple hue to the blue. And they're asking more in the shop than for the uh, Mark II, let's call it, where they get the colors uh, much much more uh, properly. And the beard now doesn't really explode in price. It's been there for, for ages. Got some uh, black, black, blacks. This one with a stick dial. Uh, you see, GMT Master 2, the 2 has a stick dial compared to this one here where the two has the uh, horizontal bars on top of the, uh, the vertical bars so premium for that about 20,000 Hong Kong that master is looking great everybody loves them but not too many people go for them impressive white dials as well I'm really surprised by the CHNL prices. I think a lot of a lot of people, a lot of foreigners have been buying these at about 150 level, so now they're moving to the 200 level. The yeah, dealers just don't let them go anymore. Yeah, this price is not interesting. Forget about it. 150, yeah, but not 190. The AP there looks huge, the 15400. I find it on the wrist is just way too big, I think, for most people. The better price here for the what they call the Paul Newman dial on the Daytona. Uh, 
CDs just two years ago were around 100, 110, and now just 200 creeps up as well. This one of the models that crept up the most. And almost overnight, it went from 120 to 160, and now 200. It's just out of range. Yeah. It'd have to be deranged to, to pay for that. 6263, very nice. And this is just more stuff here. Always some interesting stuff in the, the side of this window here at uh, uh, We Watch. Uh, I've been eyeing this one with the spider web dial 16750. I think cool price. It's been there for a while, so probably uh, over polished. Dated quartz. Want to be different of this beautiful day date here. Green dial. Can't go wrong. They just they've just added a few things here. I like this uh, Air King 5500. I think that's a pretty an interesting one to add to the collection. Probably the, the stamp of a dictatorship. This one too has been there for ages. Uh, Spiderweb tropical dial uh, sea dweller. Been there forever. Could be a dog with fleas. Alright, that was a London watch, one of the main main watch stores. Let's uh, backtrack a bit. We came from over there, by the way, and uh, check out a few more. The Vintage 4 has uh, nice stuff as well. And uh, Grateful Time has probably one of the best uh, vintage lineup. Let's start here with a Vintage 4. Don't know if you remember my video about this watch. It used to be 360. <laughs> Now 5.18. Man, 5.20. That's nuts. <sighs> but it's not like I can shit 360,000. Just like this, I would have had to sell a few few other things that, uh, that I do love in my collection to be able to get uh, one of these. I'll refer you to my video about uh, the 5960 and uh, my reservation about the, the model. Here you have all the big guns over there. And to their credit here, they at least, at least put a price on, uh, on everything, unlike the other shops. And uh, yeah, cool way to spend a million. I'd rather pay a million for this than for the 5711. I think I went in to try one of those. Maybe this Coke here. No, it was a later one. Yeah, the 2007. Just wanted one of the latest, later ones. Great condition. It's got the whole paper, I think. Uh, whole paper, whole paperwork. 
know, between watch only and this, if you're going to spend so much, just pay the extra 10% to get the, the full set right. Unless the serial number has something special like 888 in the number. That's one thing you should know about uh, local sensibilities. If uh, you find a watch with an 888 number, or a guitar for that matter, uh, I think it's always a good buy. And uh, to resell it in, uh, in Hong Kong. Exotic color there. For a 79,280. I mean, look at this GLC complication. You get the same movement as you get in the AP and all that, uh, because they, they made the movements for AP. But here, uh, you get the white, uh, the, the rose gold. 82,000, I think that's a really good price. Great looking watch. I mean, compare this stuff to that stuff. It's just gorgeous. And this is not an insane price. I, I, it is high, well, especially compared to last year. But uh, and this is one of the best lineup in the streets of vintage rare look at this yeah this is the stuff of uh, of dreams in this window nipple dial there the eye of the tiger mark 4 1675 Diamond in this is there. A few new old stocks. Yeah, you're gonna pay through the roof for those new old stocks. I really, unless you just keep them not to wear them, it's gonna cost you a fortune. Even a Bulgaria, Octofinissimo. That's weird. How did that end up here? Probably part of a, of a deal for some Rolex. Got a Gerald Genta there with Mickey. Two of them. You can tell someone unloaded a bit of a collection. They might be on consignment, uh, you know. Oh, and a pigeon. Not, not too many. You're not going to see too many today. Uh, And a beautiful 5396. Yes, you can't swim with it, but it is just gorgeous. You know, sometimes when you see so many Rolex and then uh, you see a beautiful Calatrava or a GLC dress watch, kind of makes you uh, think. All right, moving on to a Wayan uh, watch. Uh, quite a honest uh, looking shop. They have a bit of everything. Uh, quite a lot of stinkers. And then here and there, some, uh, some cool stuff. All right, some more Rolex. Uh, impressive. Stone dial here. I'm gonna need a drink soon because I'm. Uh, I think I tried this watch. You might see that in my other video, 16750. And yeah, it's been months, and that stuff just stays there. I think there's just too much choice. There's just too much of everything. Too many options. Uh, most importantly. Uh, for, for people to, to, to choose anymore. It's a new shop here. Uh, vintage Killer with some entry level watches. Might be, it might be fun to, to check it out. They might have some stuff that uh, is a bit hard to get. Anyway, a bit of Patek. Oh, that feels good to see uh, Patek sometimes. 
Uh, here, yeah, crazy price, 200,000 everywhere. I don't know, they really coordinate all the prices, you know. They're all those dealers, they know each other, they just, uh, you're not gonna really find bargains. People ask me where to go, you can go to any of these shops. They ask me if it's uh, real watches, yes, they are, but the, the prices are, are real too. You gotta, gotta be able to afford that stuff. And here we come back to, uh, oh, before we get to PNF watches, here's a watch I've been looking at, the uh, Jeger. Uh, this one, the Amvox 2, yeah, it doesn't have the power reserve. A bit harder to find the Amvox 7. Uh, but I mean, for the price, 65,000, you get that very cool articulated case uh, to, uh, so you push the actual uh, face of the watch to uh, start and stop the uh, and reset the chronograph. Okay, so this is a PNF watch and on this side is uh, always some very, very nice stuff. Got a blacked out uh, Milgaus, uh, full gold Daytona. This one here comes from, uh, from Hong Kong. It's a Hong Kong black, black, black. See, the watches used to stay on their market. Uh, but these days, here you have, uh, you know, the Porsche design. The ones by IWC cost a lot more than the ones by uh, Eterna, but they, they look very similar. And probably inside you still have the same ETA. So I would go, uh, these, these are probably 14, 20,000, uh, while the uh, Eterna that I paid, uh, that I bought, uh, I paid 7,000. And another rear sec. Hello to my friend Stanley, who wanted to show me uh, his, but we just couldn't find the time to meet, unfortunately, in this uh, busy, busy city. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I think in the past, the watches would stay on their market, but these days, about to avoid, uh, a bit to avoid uh, any trouble uh, with the Rolex uh, police, uh, a lot of the authorized dealers, oh, wow, that is beautiful. Authorized dealers from Europe will send their watches here to dealers who are going to pay the premium. And uh, the dealers here send the watches, I don't know, to Dubai and whatnot. So they, they just don't get caught. Okay, now we get to some really nice stuff. Uh, whatever, Rolex. Uh, Patek Philippe 5960, the original uh, version, I think, here. Platinum, if I'm not mistaken. That uh, our friend uh, Mark at Mr. Chrono uh, owns. He thought about selling it, I told him. If you do, you're never gonna buy it back and uh, you'll miss it. So yeah, now nah, he wears it proudly, just a gorgeous watch. And yeah, and again, the 5960, ah, there's no price. Man, I've gone back and forth. Is it, is it beautiful? Is it ugly? It, it sure is the practical Patek, you know, self-winding, a new movement, vertical clutch, so more efficient, but less beautiful, nothing to, to see, like uh, the lateral clutch uh, grand complication, the, 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 the and the chronographs, the beautiful ones. Uh, but um, still you get the chronograph, you get the loom, the power reserve, the full calendar, but no wound phase and no running seconds unless you leave the chronograph running all the time, which means the minutes will run all the time as well. And this one also has the hour counter, if I'm not mistaken, there's two arrows on top of each other on the lower counter. But yeah, it's in steel, you can wear it every day. But I think those are only 30 meter of water resistance, so careful there. And uh, well, speaking of hype watch, uh, there you go, Corono. Yeah, uh, then their own brand here, PNF, and some uh, day dates, some uh, original Tudor Chronos. I'm getting really thirsty, thirsty, thirsty. But let's keep on trucking. There's just a couple more shops I want to show you in the in the gallery. Oh, this is a brand new shop, uh, Queen Watch, or maybe it moved some from from somewhere else. First time I see it. Looks like they have a few few speedies, broad arrow. Always a uh, a good deal, the broad arrow. Uh, Thirty-two thousand.
Speed Master Pro, Broad Arrow, some Pams, Hugh Blow. Oh, a very nice uh, Pasha there. Is that the new one? 36,000 from 2021. Yeah, brand new one. 36,000? Really? I can retail like 60 or something. I'd better check it out. Could be the chance for me to get uh, get my little Pasha fix. But that's such a different watch. My wife will definitely notice <laughs> that one. Wow. Uh, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll go check it out. Uh, Vulcan there. Well, they have some exotic stuff in uh, in this window. Maybe a little gift for your girlfriend here. This uh, Cartier. How about you, Ben? How about uh, coming to check out this Cartier for your wife? She would love that one for Christmas. Um, WC. Different color than usual. Blue and black. And all things considered, this is fairly reasonable at 158,000 there. Cool color, 30 dial here, 100,000. Yeah, that's what they go for. And here, 200,000 there. Not crazy. Not crazy. But then again, it's still tons of smackaroonies, isn't it? Tudor, Tudor, I don't see the new one. No. Cool shop. Cool shop. I think it was a smaller shop before and uh, became bigger. I don't know if you want your fix of uh, local food. Maybe it's uh, Korean, Thai food as well. I'm going to pop into this uh, little shop here, see the cheap citizens. You never know. Might be something funny. Well, there you go. That was a fun shop, you know, affordable watches, uh, Squally, Orient Star, and, uh, and and those kind of uh, of brands. And uh, funnily, on the on the TV there, uh, there was a random random rub uh, playing. So we had a chat about uh, YouTube and uh, movements, uh, seagull movements from uh, China. Uh, which the gentleman in the shop uh, says is probably the most reliable of the affordable customer movements. Anyway, we move on. Uh, Target watches here. Uh, what do they have? A 1675 Mark II. VLRO, of course. They all gotta have a few of those. And look at this one. 16430. Uh, Elegant Cellini as well. And yeah, the Hulk. They, they keep up, they keep on creeping up. I really should have picked up one, I would have doubled my money by now. Uh, and here, yeah, the usual uh, fancy, flashy stuff. I mean, at this point, the guys here, they're working on very tight margins. And a lot of watches just uh, stay there for, for a long time. Uh, quite like the Tudor over there. 7900 series, 79200 series. Alright guys, come closer. This shop tends to have Limited edition uh, Omega of all sorts. Here you have uh, Snoopy and another one and another one. There you go. Cool, 168,000. This is my favorite of the Olympic models. Actually went into this shop once to ask about the price. They were asking too much. I think a fair price around 55. They were asking 62, I think. Uh, but I really like this one. Inside is just a regular moon watch. But I think you do have the adjustment in the clasp and the sapphire crystal. So at least it's a bit different than the 
the, the classic moon watch with the, the, the Hesa light. Same movement uh, inside and there's a lot less loom as well, it's only loom plots. But I think the colorway is, uh, is very cool, very cool. But it's, you know, you buy this and then you can't buy something else. Uh, you have to choose uh, 1957 here, Hermes watch. More, more, more speedies. Uh, and if you want your army gear, it's probably for the uh, slightly deranged cool stuff here. So this shop has a lot of uh, new old stock and uh, used. Uh, Bit rare models uh, from uh, from Seiko. Got the blue dial here on the Grand Seiko Diver. An elegant quartz. Crater, you don't often see Crater stuff like this. That is a lovely grand circle. I'm trying to capture the color because it doesn't show. You actually have all the grand circle logos on this uh, dial. There you go. That's a very nice one. You know, you don't always need the, the latest, greatest. You know, sometimes you can find uh, something amazing that's been a bit forgotten. Full GMT with a nice dial, high beat too. That's a very nice one, very beautiful case. Really like the dial on this one. It's got something, but it's not too flashy. You got the high beat, the GMT, bit of red. That's a that's a badass watch, you know. That's a badass uh, version of the GMT. I like it. I don't know how much it is, can't see, but I like it. <coughs> cool watch, could be your one watch. That's for sure. Hey, there you go. Is that the peacock? No, 70,000, but SBGJ005. SBGJ227 is the peacock. This is the Mount Iwate dial, I believe. Frankly, uh, isn't it even better? I just can't tell them apart, to be honest. Uh, price quite good, actually. Not There's barely uh, one or two on uh, Chrono 24. Interesting. Much nicer than this. bit of a vintage vibe here, very nice. You see here and there you find those nuggets. Cool pieces, vintage pieces. What is that for? And those original divers here as well. It's a very cool shop. There you go, in the Dundas Gallery. This one is called a PNL watch if you're looking for it. And right next to it is another Seiko fanboy shop. Great looking, uh, great looking one here. It's strange, you know, those models come and go and we forget about them. Nice citizen, the green dial. You can still find the uh, good old SKX. Everybody should have one. If you don't have one, I recommend you to get one because they are discontinued now. Still probably 
hundreds of thousands going about, but eventually it will get harder to get them and uh, they are worth every few pennies that you put uh, in them. Cool brown GMT, another GMT. Everybody wants a GMT, I love a GMT. I don't even know why I barely ever look at the GMT function. And then you have the, uh, say, another Seitona before the Seitona came out. Uh, people forgot about this one. It's uh, also quartz. And it came in and it came out and uh, nobody noticed. If anything, it looks even better than uh, the speed timer, doesn't it? The bracelet is uh, is better. At least it works with the case. Anniversary version here. Ah, this one I like it very much. Uh, this presage, I think the green colors are great. The white one is cool too. It's just too many at some point you, you gotta say uh, again it's just too many you can't even choose uh, which one is my favorite here it's just hard to say maybe this one but you see I get uh, carried away by those things and then I realize hey man I have a Rolex Explorer why would I buy something that's pretty much the Seiko version of it and spend you know again three, four, seven hundred dollar in it. In the end, all that money adds up and, uh, and counts. All right, uh, a few more vintage. I'm gonna show you a couple more, couple more shops. Right off uh, Nathan Road. So there you go, that's what uh, commercial street on the other side of Hong Kong, Kowloon side of Hong Kong uh, looks like. It's, uh, it's very lively, bit messy, bit dirty, bit run down to be honest. Uh, but that's, uh, here they go. That's just uh, normal life around here oh Japanese food everywhere and as you can see very safe you know nobody's gonna more sushi nobody's gonna really bother you around here Coffee shops, vintage clothing. You can find anything, you can find it quick, and you can find pretty much at any hour of the day, every day, 24 7, this city. Yes, it gets a bit tiring sometimes. Everyone needs a break from it. That's when you go to the beach, you go walk in the mountain. It's exhausting to just uh, walk around like this. Searching for that uh, good price, which you're not going to find on a Rolex, of course. All right, as we pass Longines and get to the main road, Nathan Road, something a bit peculiar. The Pelagos commercial, putting in big the old one and in small, well no, there's not even the, the, the new one, it's only the old one. It's kind of bizarre, no, when they just released the uh, FXD and then they make a big commercial for the, the slow seller, the outgoing, uh, well not the outgoing, but uh, the older model with the date not quite sure what that's about maybe it's a trick you know they release a new one you can't find it so 
they remind you the old one is still there looks pretty much the same and uh, there you go oh citizen let's go have a look inside see if we can see the citizen I haven't seen it in person yet I'm really looking forward to uh, see that uh, what is it ten thousand dollar watch let's have a look right so there was no citizen the citizen at citizen well actually they had it uh, they had the solar powered one but quartz one but the uh, automatic one is sold out they only got uh, two of them in uh, this particular shop actually i thought it was a regular production model but it's uh, limited maybe it's better that way I'm not sure how collectible that is gonna remain. All right, over there is two door Rolex. I don't think we're gonna bother crossing the street for that. Okay, this is it. Uh, Wing Kong watch. This is uh, probably the most bullshit store you're gonna find on this street. Prices are completely uh, demented. The sales staff is absolutely ignorant. And uh, when you walk in, they just uh, talk to you like uh, like a moron everything is is overpriced I had a few uh, good laughs in that shop when they were trying to uh, convince me of uh, what was a good purchase it was always a, a good laugh to listen to those idiots I mean, they obviously imagine that I'm a, I'm a tourist uh, when I walk in here. Although these days, there's not so many tourists. Uh, but look, they're, they're all watching there, looking for a commission. So as, you, as soon as you walk in, little junior there is going to jump on you. And then you ask him something, he has no clue. So he's going to pass you on to the uh, older guy in the, in the shop. So, hey, look, the watch that I paid 35,000, they're asking for 43. Mine came with the papers, I'm guessing this one will not, but there you go. If you like uh, my Salmon-ish uh, dial, uh, 79280, uh, there you go, 43,800. Which is not insane, given that it's not the most common dial variation. But, but still, I would uh, try to negotiate lower, especially if uh, it doesn't come with the with the papers and uh, right next door there's uh, a sort of a big gallery with a lot of uh, Rolex and Seiko I don't think it even has a name in uh, in English it's just uh, it's an extremely busy gallery I'm guessing a lot of games and stuff but still you can find lots of uh, watches on the expensive side because of the location which is very uh, very exposed they don't even uh, show prices but there you go you can find the same stuff everywhere rolex is not rare at all of course The vintage Tudors, uh, the big blocks, and all that. If I was you, I wouldn't go for the big block. I would go for the uh, rounded uh, block. Always some cool vintage in this uh, little shop. If you're looking for a small, you know, Patek or Omega vintage, uh, this is one shop to, to consider. Inside this. Uh, unnamed uh, gallery cool root beer there if you want to play it like a Clint Eastwood some vintage bracelets cool dyed color on this one 1803 some more there's a Gégère Le Coultre there. A bit more vintage. And again, you know, if you love uh, vintage Rolex, 
This is not one of the shops that I recommend to go first. I don't think uh, they have much of a reputation. So you you better know more than them about whatever it is that they are selling. I'm guessing a lot of stuff here has been uh, potentially tampered with, so careful. But if you're looking for it, this is called Noble. And then uh, after that, there's a, a big Seiko shop here with a bunch of random, random brands. And oh, they do have Timex here. As it turns out, I just uh, found on the uh, the Marlin at a good discount on uh, Amazon and ordered it from the US. So probably I could have purchased it here. Is there any other interesting, uh, interesting one? Or some Chinese brands? Uh, yeah, no. Nothing really nice uh, in the Timex. Or maybe here. Maybe this is where they put the good stuff. Let's see. Uh, no. Oh yeah, here there is a uh, black marlin, but the price is even more than what they ask to buy it on the website itself of the brand. I think it's sixteen hundred Hong Kong dollar on the website. So there you go. Why pay more? And uh, oh, this is quite funny. Coca Cola branded Timex. Here you can have your root beer, rose gold. And of course, you have your Royal Oaks. This brand is called uh, Di Milano. <laughs> cheeky, cheeky stuff. So there you go. If you want your Seiko fix, those two shops. Quite interesting, they have all the new stuff, but they also have some uh, old stuff like the original Marine Masters. The, even the one with the gold uh, colorway, which I quite like. There's just something special with the Marine Masters, called Marine Masters, uh, on the dial. All right, little bonus. We are at the Jordan Station. Exit, uh, what is this, uh, B1. And right across the road, you'll find Rolex Tudor. And in this little gallery, there's a great shop called uh, Watch Out. And in this uh, curious little gallery, you're gonna find a uh, Watch out! And the gentleman there is uh, very knows everything about Seiko. Good fun to talk to him. And uh, inside is the the good stuff. But they also so also have uh, Steinhardt. You know the brand. All the stuff like this. Let's see inside if there's something interesting. What's the reference on this? S B G J? S B G A. G A. Well, there you go. Always surprising stuff in that shop. Limited editions for China, limited editions for Japan. Some, uh, yeah, some spring drives you've never seen uh, before, haven't been advertised uh, anywhere. And uh, yeah, he gets them directly from, uh, from, from Japan. So always interesting to check out the watch outs. Probably the best uh, Seiko store 
always a few other other ones that uh, are not as well known in the in the city so that was the extra about Jordan if you want to find more watches you'd have to cross over uh, to the to the other side there Brewing Street Bowing Street at the angle of Nathan Road and, uh, now here right above the station there's a sort of gallery and uh, inside you can uh, get your watch polished and also buy some uh, straps and uh, pretty decent watch boxes is the ones you've seen in my video i think it's on this floor or maybe one floor lower going two floors down one floor up from the uh, jordan station There you go, and you can have uh, your watches uh, repolished as well. I'm gonna maybe grab a watch box. I'm running out of space. Let's see if Tudor has uh, the new models. They don't, of course not. Why would they sell watches in the stores? That's not the way it's done anymore. All right, guys, uh, from uh, Yo Mate, been walking for three hours, that's enough, I'm signing out and I'll speak to you in the next one, bye bye.